Fitzwilliam Darcy is a hero of the novel Pride and Prejudice. It is interesting that when Pride and Prejudice begins, the initial interest is in Bingley, whom we immediately regard as a most eligible bachelor on whom all the neighborhood mothers have their eyes. Darcy comes only as his friend. He seems to take a side role as a foil to Bingley, his apparent pride and haughtiness contrasting Bingley's good-natured pleasantness. Since Bingley seems to be so kindly and warm, we tend to judge Darcy more harshly. Hostility to him is increased by his interference in the Jane Bingley affair. This negative attitude to him is maintained till as late as chapter 33, by which time we are convinced that he is thoroughly unlikable. Then he proposes to Elizabeth and is rejected, after which we see him beginning to change. The Darcy that now gradually emerges is totally at odds with the Darcy we knew in the first 33 chapters. Our dislike turns into respect as he ceases to be the anti-hero. The change that he undergoes is positive development, but what makes him an acceptable round character is the fact that there is a psychological basis too and justification for this change. With the initial interest in Bingley and a negative interest in Darcy, we may like the former but have to admit that Darcy seems to have a greater depth. With the initial interest in Bingley and the negative interest in Darcy, we may like the former but have to admit that Darcy seems to have a greater depth. Because he is only good, Bingley is one-dimensional, like Jane almost a cardboard cutout. But Darcy, dislike him as we do, intrigues us because we cannot summarily label him. This also makes him interesting. Further, as a complex character, he provokes Elizabeth's interest because her self-admission is that she seeks amusement in people. Darcy gains her interest because he is complex. This creates a paradox. Elizabeth is interested in him because he is complex, but because he is complex, her judgment of him is wrong. This indicates one of Darcy's functions in the novel, to draw out Elizabeth's inadequacy. In this case, her wrong and biased judgments. So she dismisses him as proud and arrogant, but this is not what his friends think of him. It is because he is complex that Darcy is warm-hearted to his friends but heartless to those who do not know him. These different opinions enable us to see him from various points of view and we realize that he is different things to different people. It is generally accepted that he is a, quote, fine figure of a man, unquote, but Mrs. Bennet believes that he is a, quote, most disagreeable horrid man, unquote. He is said to be, quote, eat up with pride, unquote. He is attracted to Elizabeth by her eyes and face and manner, but repelled by what he calls, quote, the inferiority of her connections, unquote. And this puts everybody, including the reader, off. Elizabeth is confirmed that he is arrogant, conceited, selfish, and disdainful. On the other hand, Caroline refers to his, quote, calmness of temper and presence of mind, unquote. We discover that he has deep brotherly affection for his sister and is a kind and careful guardian to her. These contradictory reports underline what appeared to be the complexity of his nature. One thing is, however, clear. He is indeed proud. Pride cuts him off from people who are socially inferior. When he calls at the parsonage, he seldom appears animated. He sits silently and when he does speak, he seems to do so out of necessity, not choice, and he seems to be struggling against himself. But this same proud demeanor can be kind, affectionate and thoughtful with his friends. The evidence thus suggests that Darcy is not inherently proud and arrogant. His pride is really a kind of mask constructed out of the necessity of fixed notions and conventions. Deep down he is good, sincere, thoughtful and considerate, qualities which are drawn out by his developing relationship with Elizabeth. Once drawn out, he is able to drop, as it were, his mask to become what he really is, regardless of time, place and company. He thus matures into a better, well-rounded person. Before the process of maturation can begin, we are introduced to the undeveloped Darcy. 
His pride and haughtiness are evident at the Meditan Ball where he refuses to socialize because he is conscious of his superiority. Then he comments that Elizabeth is tolerable but not handsome enough to tempt him. This puts her off and she shows it, which in turn attracts Darcy because he is intrigued. His interest is aroused not only by emotional attraction but also because his vanity has been injured. Hence his odd attitude to Elizabeth. While attracted, he remains steadfastly proud. So when he proposes to her, it is almost as if he is doing it against his will. The manner in which he proposes is also shockingly condescending. This is an insult to Elizabeth's pride and she rejects him. He becomes pale with anger but listens to her accusations and then observes that she might have overlooked his offences if her pride had been hurt by his directness. Her rejection, however, has the effect of shocking him out of his composed little world. Darcy is one who has taken all for granted and therefore is basically insensitive to people. Elizabeth's rejection suddenly makes him sensitively conscious that she is a person and that she has feelings that he cannot ig ignore. This is where he begins to change. His first hesitating step is the letter he writes. He apologizes for offending her and defends himself and tries to explain his mistakes. The real Darcy now begins to emerge. Now his better side is revealed from the reliable evidence of his servants. He has never spoken crossly, was a sweet-tempered and good-natured boy, is affable to the poor, is the best possible landlord and master, is thought to be proud because he never talks, and is a model brother. Then he meets Elizabeth again at Pemberley and his behavior is strikingly altered. He speaks with civility and inquires about her family. His manners are softened and Mrs. Gardiner comments that, quote, he is perfectly well behaved, polite and unassuming, unquote. Subsequently, there is further improvement in his manners, quote, so desirous to please, so free from self-consequence or unbending reserve, unquote. Then Lydia's elopement provides him with the opportunity to prove his new mettle. By now it is clear that Darcy himself progresses in self-understanding, realizes that he had been selfish, spoiled, allowed to be overbearing, and that it was ultimately Elizabeth who changed him. Quote, you taught me a lesson. By you I was properly humbled. Unquote. He comes to tolerate her relations and neighbors with admirable calmness. In short, he is completely changed from the character we knew in the first half of the novel. The change in character and the development of personality make Darcy a round character. At the same time, Elizabeth's interest in him identifies his intricacy. However, we see him mostly from Elizabeth's point of view and therefore are not intimately shown what he thinks or feels, something that would have helped us to understand him better. Darcy's function as a character is difficult for the heroine to interpret and yet necessary for her to do so if she is to make proper decision. However difficult Elizabeth's task of interpreting Darcy may be, it is clear from the beginning that he is proud and has a strong sense of propriety and dignity. He interests us chiefly because he is the center of Elizabeth's interest and because he exists in a situation in which the individual must choose and in which marriage is a single area of choice. Darcy represents Elizabeth's only plausible mate. But when he becomes, at the end, the conventionally genuine hero, he seems to come very close to forfeiting all his claims to her interest. She had considered him interestingly because he was complex. Therefore, now that he is less intricate, he is less amusing. Such a drastic change of character makes for, in the words of R. A. Browser, quote, a sudden diminishing in intensity and originality, unquote. However, it is true that the point of view is to a great extent responsible for this, because for the most we see Darcy from the outside, from Elizabeth's point of view, which in the first part of the novel prevents a more sympathetic response to him. Whether Austen is uncertain in her delineation of male characters or whether she wrote the novel at the age of 22 is not the point and cannot sufficiently explain the change in Darcy's character. 
it is best to define him within the limits of his own experience. Like Elizabeth, he undergoes a process of transformation leading to self-awareness so that he is cured of his shortcomings and prejudices. He now earns Elizabeth's gratitude and affection. Now that he has shed his enigmatic character, he becomes less amusing. But he is the only person in disposition and talents who can suit Elizabeth best. Her ease and liveliness can soften his mind and improve his manners. His judgment and knowledge can temper her inexperience. His final function in the novel then is to provide Elizabeth with a true partner. His importance is also seen in that all the other male characters circle as foils around him. He also contrasts Elizabeth and together they form a true unity. Darcy represents the male ideal. He is intelligent, rational, strong, active and filled with inner goodness. And he proves himself to be a mature lover with strong affections, generosity and altruism. What he remains throughout the novel is a person who is sensitive, intelligent and individualistic.